Hey, welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. This video is gonna be the last in our series on using art expressively. So far, we've talked about joy, sadness, aggression, strength, and restfulness. Today, we're gonna finish that discussion by talking about fiction. And we're going to use the same construction method as we have for the last two drawings of figures in our strength and rest videos. So if we're using the same method as the last two videos, let's kind of recap our thought, our construction process of what we did in those last two lessons. In both our vertical and horizontal lessons, we talked about creating the basic structure of where all the different parts of a person would be, and then going back later to add details like eyes, nose, mouth, ears, hair, helmet, mask, shirt, clothes, outfit, uniform, whatever, fingers, all of that stuff. All of that stuff gets added as details later. So we're just trying to get the basic construction first. We're gonna do that today too. Uh, today, we're talking about how things that are diagonal, whichever diagonal either, right, it could go that way or it could go that way, either diagonal, things that are diagonal feel like they have a lot of movement or action, even if they're just sitting still on a page. But um, Every, every time you add diagonal elements to your illustrations, it makes them feel like they are more active. So to show that, I'm gonna need, uh, I, 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 it's difficult to turn your paper diagonal. We, we don't normally think of like, if we were gonna hang it on a wall, would we hang a picture diagonally? I mean, you could, but most people don't. Like you wouldn't get a frame that's diagonal for anyway. Uh, so, my paper is horizontal, but everything that I draw is going to be diagonal. And I can use both diagonals if I need to, but if I have most things going in the same diagonal, that's going to give a lot of direction to the action, if that makes sense. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make like a sort of landscape where my character is like hiking up a mountain, right? And so I'm gonna kind of just have, you know, a bumpy, rocky, mountainous terrain here, right? I'm not trying to be perfect with any of this. I'm just kind of getting a placement for starters. I can add detail later, okay? Now, um, I'm gonna wanna see my whole figure and he's gonna be like leaning forward as he moves up this hill or up this mountain. He's not gonna be just standing straight. He's gonna be leaning diagonally. Okay, that's gonna make it feel like he is really, really pushing forward up this hill. So how am I gonna do that? Well, um, I'm gonna have one leg be just completely diagonal, and then his foot would be here. All right, there's his foot. And then his other leg is gonna be bent but still diagonal, right? Right, like this part is diagonal, right? And then this part is even a little bit diagonal going that direction, right? And then his other foot and his feet are diagonal because they're going up the edge of the mountain here, right? And then his body is gonna be diagonal leaning into it as he's walking up this hill. Uh, his hands, well, if it's the same character I've been doing, he's gonna have a sword and a shield, right? So, how's that gonna work out? Well, uh, maybe this arm, right? The arm is gonna come from the top of the body. Maybe this arm is angling down and then bending at the elbow and angling back up. Again, diagonal, diagonal, and He's gonna have his hand here and he's gonna have a sword in this hand coming up at a diagonal. He's like really marching on forward with that sword out. His other hand 
coming from the other side of his body. We're kind of looking at him sideways here. His other hand is going to angle back the other way. It's going to kind of angle where we don't see the hand. The hand's on the other side of the body. But his shield, his shield is going to be overlapping behind him. If we could see the whole shield, we would see the top of the shield here. And then we would see it coming down, kind of like this. Now we can't see the whole shield. We can't see the part of the shield that's behind him. So I'm gonna erase the bits that are behind him, okay? But notice how that shield is diagonal, going behind him, right? Right? And then his head. I haven't drawn his head yet. His head is also going to be at the same diagonal as his body and this leg, this back leg. And so because he is leaning heavily into this hill, everything going this diagonal, it really feels active. It really feels like he's actually booking it, like he's moving up that hill. He's got a purpose. He's got a goal. He's got an agenda. He's got something he wants to do. He's going to go win this fight, whatever, whatever he's got his sword for. I don't know. Now, like I mentioned before, you sometimes want other diagonals that come in the opposite direction just to kind of balance things a little bit. I might have a distant mountain back in the background that goes up kind of the other direction um, that's, that's more distant, more farther away. Um, or... Maybe there's like wind coming in or something like that or clouds or something that kind of get another diagonal coming in the opposite direction just for a little bit of balance. But this main foreground idea is clearly moving this direction and it's very active. He's not just kind of slow walking that way. He's really pushing through. Once you've got the construction and the basic layout, the basic plan, then you go back in and you add whatever details are needed. The face, the hair, the what kind of sword is this? What, what clothes is this guy wearing? What other plants and rocks and stuff are on the ground? Is this snow on the mountain? What, what does the distant mountain look like? Are there any birds or anything flying in the sky? Any little details like that that you need to add to your picture, those come after we've got this basic foundation. There, yeah, I think I'm gonna call that done. I think, I think that's got, you know, the details don't all have to be diagonal, but the basic structure, the construction of the picture, the basic idea, the mountains, the character, the sword, the shield, all of those things are diagonal. And that really just makes it feel like this little ninja guy is really booking it up that hill. Now, do you have to draw a ninja guy with a little karate outfit? No, no. You figure out what yours is going to be like. This finishes our series on creating expressive artwork. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you next time.